your guide to the truth. The new American Media dot com. Hello, everybody. Brian Engelman here with the New American Media. I'm pleased to be joined with Rosa Corey. She's the author of this book, Behind the Green Mask, UN Agenda 21. Rosa, thank you very much for joining us today. My pleasure. Thanks. Um, behind the Green Mask of Agenda 21. What is behind the Green Mask of Agenda 21? Mm -hmm. Well, the Green Mask is Agenda 21. It's uh, sustainable development, and it's the biggest public relations scam in the history of the world. Actually. What about, what, what about climate change? Well, um, you know, as I say, whether it's true or not, uh, they would have made it up just because they're using it as an excuse to implement this plan. Now, 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 sustainable living is something I actually really care about on a personal level, but this is way beyond someone going off the grid and becoming self-sustainable and sufficient in their own life. This is much more. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we're not talking about creative reuse and uh, recycling here. We're talking about a global totalitarian state that's being erected all around us. I, I do feel that that's happening. Yeah, you do. And that's because uh, National Defense Authorization Act, smart meters, smart growth, Common Core, this is all United Nations Agenda 21, sustainable development. Now, now Blake Wally is here with us filming. Blake, you want to wave your camera? Say hello. Hi, <laughs> everybody. Well, well, Blake, I go visit him in Las Vegas. We were just out at the Bundy Ranch, that huge showdown with the BLM, public use and all that stuff. But he refers to his neighborhood as, oh, welcome to my Agenda 21 neighborhood. It, it's very designed. Can you explain what it looks like in, in everyday life when people are just hanging out in their suburb? What does it look like in action, this Agenda 21? Well, you know, there are a lot of things to look for, but what you're going to see it as primarily when you're in your town as a land use plan. So this is a restrictive plan. It's referred to as new urbanism or smart growth. And it's, uh, you're going to see it as high density urban development. It's ground floor retail with multi-stories of residential above. And then, uh, you know, often you're going to have either a high speed bus lane or, you know, that doesn't even exist. You may or may not have your bus. You may or may not have your train. This is about using uh, our, our tax dollars to subsidize private development. And the, the goal is to move people out of the rural and suburban areas into high density megacities where they can be more easily managed, controlled, and surveilled. I did, I did mention that I was just out at the Bundy Ranch and it was about cattle grazing and free range grass and it turned into they made First Amendment areas where you were cattled in and, and, and so do you feel that this is, it, it's kind of like, uh, to piggyback on what you were just saying there, it's kind of like turning us into cattle and we're roaming a little too free, it's time to get back into your pens. Yeah, forget about free range, <laughs> you're not going to be having that. This plan is about uh, really essentially removing you from any free independent space and re restricting you to high density city centers. So um, the, the goal is the elimination of the nation state and uh, the implementation of mega cities as the new principle. Systems. This is uh, neo-feudalism. It's fascism. So okay, so so you're saying the UN is behind this? Who is the UN? For I mean, yeah, okay, blue hats and stuff, but like, who are they? Who is it really controlled by? Like, who are the puppet masters behind this? I'm trying to piece it together. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's the thing is the United Nations is a framework for this. This is the structure for a parallel, you know, shadow government. So um, the goal is to remove us from the, having the option of representative government, which is, of course, what we have in the United States. For now. Okay, right. And, but we have the shell of it, and it's even less so more and more as we move into this full plan, where you'll, you'll be able to vote, but your vote will really ultimately be meaningless because your representative will be owned by major corporations or um, the, the uh, um, non-profits that are being funded by the corporate foundations. So this is about actually removing our ability to self-govern and uh, restricting us to areas where we're not able to be independent. Now, I live in a condo in Los Angeles myself, and I've seen some stuff come through with LADWP saying, oh, smart meters are coming, and I, 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 I why should I care about that? Is this something you follow as well? You mentioned the smart meters earlier. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, think about this. When you're in a high-density development and you've 
you decide you don't want smart meters on the side of your building, your 200 unit building, mm -hmm. I mean, good luck to you, right? And you know, let's say you do opt out on that meter, but there's 199 other meters that are hanging on the wall right on the other side of your bedroom. You know, you're not gonna have much option there. Right. And this is, uh, you know, whether there are actual health issues uh, with smart meters or not, the smart grid is a way to regulate everything that is attached to it. So what we have here is uh, ultimate technology. This is something the Nazis, of course, really tried for and they were unable to pull this off because they just didn't have the technological capability. But we do have it now. Oh, could you? We don't have it. No, no, we they have it. No, we're not allowed to have it. Could you imagine if the SS had the NSA like, like oh, we do now? I know, you're so right. I mean, they'd just be like, so thrilled but this you know really I mean you know they didn't just whip you know flip a light switch in 1945 and everything go away you know the OSS became the CIA and what you have are you know operation paperclip bringing the Nazis into the US and of course you've got who's big in the smart grid who's big in who's big in sustainable development Siemens Corporation which was a Nazi corporation the um, you know they were almost out of business until Hitler supplied them with slave labor from the camps right now they're in um, the smart grid they're in uh, high high-speed rail, they're in uh, light rail, medium rail, they're in water. And how about IBM, right? Uh, you know, Hitler, uh, they, they basically consorted with the enemy. And now what are they in? They, you know, I mean, remember the, the tattoos on the arms? That was because IBM provided the, uh, the uh, computer systems for Hitler, right? Well, now they're in biometrics, right? They're into creating this system. This is a technological system that runs us instead of the other way around. See, because I've always been concerned about the mark of the beast, whether it's taken biblically or whether it's just taken abstract. The idea of needing to be in a system, to be tagged, to be tattooed, to be retinal scan, fingerprint, whatever the case may be, when someone else controls your power, your water, and you're, you're tagged and bagged based on who you donate to, which political parties you donate to, uh, what, what websites you go on to, what content you post, what you've said in your private telephone conversations that have been recorded to be used against you at a later point. I, the technology, I love it because I can communicate with the world, obviously, and you can communicate with Rosa by checking out Behind the Green Mask, you and Agenda 21, and uh, you guys can have that dialogue going there. Um, but it's creepy because it's turnkey tyranny if you want to be a dirtbag. And I don't trust these guys in power at all. Well, I hope you don't. And I love that turnkey tyranny because that, you know, I mean, this is it. They've provided themselves with a perfect system. And this is, uh, you know, this is not a system that serves us. This is flypaper that catches us. And, you know, and then, uh, you know, what is it? It's your health care records, your banking records, your phone records, your internet records, every aspect of your life, your DNA, you know, is all known. Every Every text message you've sent, all the TV shows that you DVR and you watch more than once, it's everything. Right, and you know there's that uh, million and a half square foot um, uh, center in, U at, in Utah that's pr that is basically channeling all of the overseas cables, all the United States uh, uh, information. It's all coming in to Utah and that's on Camp Williams. It's an, air, it's a, it's an army intelligence base. You're not getting in there. And anything that you've got encrypted, hey, guess what? You've got it encrypted now, but they're collecting it all so that when, it's, when they figure out how to break the encryption, they've got everything. These are people who have really calculated that they can control the world and whether you know the individual by face or not it's irrelevant it's a technocracy this is not about an individual or individuals it's an elite thing but what it's really about is controlling the entirety of the world and we have absolutely no chance against it unless we fight together unless we become aware we need awareness is the first step in the resistance okay so now that we're aware I just want to jump back to something I still was a little unclear on so so the the air quote elite because you're no more elite than me so get over yourselves um, when they kick people out of the rural and the suburban areas what are the, what do they they intend to do with it once everybody's in these dense mega cities so, so now what do you do with the farmland what are you doing with it mm -hmm. well you know when you're restricting people from the 
resources, whether it's uh, your climate action plans saying that you can't use your water, you can't use your timber, you can't use your gas, you can't use your oil, you can't use your land, right? So those are all resources and oh boy, we don't want to use any of those because we might be able to live independently, right? So um, the idea is to restrict us from getting into those rural and suburban areas at all. So we are collected in a you know dense city center where we have no options, no way to leave unless we're on that high-speed train that doesn't exist, right? And then, of course, all of those resources are then available to the mega corporations and the, you know, and the people who are then going to profit from them. So whether they're using debt for nature swaps with, uh, and that's the United Nations program that says that all creditor nations can then um, deal with their debtor nations and in an exchange for their natural resources. You know, you might have something like that. You might have, you know, the fringe of whatever it is that you can see from your mega city window and then beyond that it might be strip mined or whatever for the uh, mega corporations who are controlling all of those resources. <sighs> okay, so we're here at the Free and Equal Festival. What brought you out to this and why do you feel this is an important event to attend? I think it's fabulous to be in a group of people that um, it's a really disparate group. It's uh, it's eclectic, interesting, very wide range of, uh, of political uh, opinions and attitudes and um, certainly uh, it's, for me, it's been just wonderful to have conversations with people and open their eyes to United Nations Agenda 21 Sustainable Development and to hear what their trip is. Absolutely. And so if people want to find out more about your book, about any other places you're at on social media, where can they get more information, Rosa? Well, come and check us out at DemocratsAgainstUNAgenda21.com or take a look at the Post Sustainability Institute. We've got tons of videos, information. Of course, you can get my book. We've got blogs, lots and lots of information, flyers that you can use to get out to your friends. And mainly, this is all about you stepping up and taking control of your life, because if you don't do it, somebody else will. No, absolutely. And, and just as a side note, as we go here, um, I, I moved into New Mexico for about six weeks working on, they're called Earth Ships. I don't know uh -huh. if you're familiar with them, yeah. with Michael Reynolds and all these guys and building off the grid, self-sustainable homes where you catch your own rainwater, use it three times. Right. I like the idea of personally being accountable for my life. Mm -hmm. But what you're saying is taking this into a Sim City level where, where you, you play God and you design the whole world and you have ultimate control over everything else and just... Tell me why those two things are different, why I should be so cautious of that, because it sounds good in theory. It's a poison pill. Here you go. It's wrapped in bacon. Right. <laughs> and then they're gone. Yeah. Well, you know, if you like the idea of Earth ships, and it's a cool idea, you know, you want to be independent. You want to create a structure that's, you know, that's uh, that's self-sufficient, right? You want to be self-sufficient. Yeah. This plan is an it's completely antithetical to that concept, because, you know, who owns your water? You want to collect water from the sky, that is not your water. You want to be able to get out to your land out there in the hinterlands of New Mexico or whatever, you're not going to have roads. You think, okay, I don't need roads, I've got my, you know, my truck or whatever it is. You're not going to have access. You're going to lose your water, you're going to lose your uh, access, your road access. You're going to be restricted in uh, through uh, land use to what you can do out there. And unless you've got an armed rebellion, which believe me, the government's got a lot bigger weapons than your pop gun uh, you're gonna you know this is we got to fight this before we get into a situation where you know it starts to get ugly Excellent. It's we're ugly enough as it is. Indeed, but we're all here in Los Angeles trying to communicate with each other, multiply the message a little bit, and please check out Rosa's work online. Rosa, I appreciate your time hey, today. Thanks a lot. Thank you much.